Hi, I'm John Mundang with the XOS Grimes Mercury. Today we're going to be talking about virtual reality. Now, to start off, I'm going to have my panel introduce themselves. Bob Kundazi, I'm a history he teacher here at the high school. Art Searle, teacher at the high school. Sam Van Geisen, EWG senior. Ron Rounds, uh, teacher, high school. Christopher Pancaro, network administrator for the district. All right, so for the first half of the show, what we're going to be talking about is basically where virtual reality is at now. Um, basically, I know that they have all different kinds of things coming out for it. It's brand new, just on the market, just kind of readily available to the general public. Um, anybody have anything they want to? Well, I will start off if you don't mind. Uh, these glasses are the cheaper ones, thirty dollars. Yeah, you bought I, those on Amazon, right? Right, and uh, as you can see, um, you put your iPhone in there, and you look at all sort of apps. One of the apps I've shown you was a music video and Dizzy. You were, yeah. now, how did you? What do you think about that? All right. Well, when you first showed me the Disney one, like I was, I was like crazy because like I was just literally standing in the middle of Disney World, and there's like this random Asian family just sitting next to me who I've never seen before, and like I can literally go back and like watch Cinderella like on a float and then turn around and there's this family there and I can do that whenever I want. Like, it was awesome. You kind of just answered your own question. Yeah, it was. <laughs> all right. <laughs> My first experience with it was a, with a, a similar device. Uh, Mark Murphy had it. And I remember sitting in a boat and looking around in that boat and turning around and seeing a leak in the back of the boat. And the experience was uh, amazing. And with the headphones on and the tricks that they do with surround sound, to make the sounds come from different directions. Uh, very realistic, very realistic. I'm sure I was sitting there with my mouth hanging open. Sam, how uh, about well, your first experience with virtual reality? Uh, yeah, I had a similar fir first experience, um, again, using uh, Mr. Murphy's uh, headset. And I um, went through the same simulation, and uh, it was just amazing um, riding through that boat. And as you're looking around, you see children hanging off buildings and looking out at you. Throughout all directions, you're just encompassed into that landscape, and that's something that really uh, takes control. It really makes you feel that all things encompassed, you're actually there. Now, has anyone here not tried virtual reality yet? I haven't tried it yet. I bought the cardboard thing, I guess, like similar to that, but I haven't, uh, I haven't hooked it up yet. I'm almost like hesitant to, like, because I'm listening to all you guys talk about how incredibly awesome it is. It kind of <laughs> sounds like heroin to me. Um. <laughs> I, I think I think the uh, the it was so real or real enough to make the best flat screen TV that I've ever seen a video on look like a black and white old school RCA by comparison. And it was it was vibrant. It was there. You were there yeah. in it. I'll uh, say I first experienced virtual reality three years ago when I started going to a. Uh, convention called PAX, which is the Penny Arcade Convention in uh, Massachusetts. <coughs> now, um, it was on Oculus Rift, and that's like, um, like very, very high-end PCs were able to, you know, generate the virtual reality where you put on, you know, headset and everything, and it was a space simulator. And throughout the years I've gone, it's just steadily gotten better and better. So this year when I went to PAX, you actually got to control, um, it was spacecraft, it was a fl flight sim with actual um, aviator controls, like a, uh, what's it called? Yeah. Joystick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A joystick, joystick everything, yeah. but it was like right. the actual equipment you would normally find on that kind of aircraft or whatever. It was, it is really, really progressing faster than I ever imagined. Now, I know me and Sam just tried it for the first time, like, ever, like, this year. When, how long has this been out? Like, I, I have no idea. So, Oculus Rift has uh, steadily been gaining more and more uh, popularity. I first uh, saw it three years ago at PAX on, you know, very, very high-end computers where you would, uh, back then, need uh, tri-SLI or at least SLI, which is two graphics cards. Um, to you know, render the images and you know, give you that. Now, uh, since technology has improved so much, uh, you're seeing it require less and less um, hardware and more on like either the video side or like programming side of it. 
how um, it's it's still very uh, hardware intensive, but it's gone down quite a bit. Yeah, it's just now they are thing. working on. Uh, I think I mentioned this in class one time. I, a couple of weeks ago on TV, they're working on gloves that will connect to the uh, the VR, where you're touching things. It, obviously, they're not there, but it's fooling your mind into thinking if you you know touch a baseball bat, you're actually feeling it, and uh, that's the next step. That'd be cool. I remember uh, when I first tried it, um, I had like a horror film, and like I put it on. And like there was like this, like, it was like the classic creepy girl that you see in like uh, what was that movie? The Grunge. No, uh, it was the Stephen King. She's movie. Too much in every everyone. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, like I was like kicking at her, like trying to get her to get away from me, but like I couldn't see my foot there, and I'm just kicking, and it was like everyone was like taking videos of me and stuff. It was hilarious. I think if anybody that hasn't tried it and doesn't have the equipment wants to get a very basic sense of what that virtual virtual reality might be like. Uh, take a device that has motion sensors in it, like a phone or an iPad, and head to uh, YouTube and do a search for um, virtual reality video or 360 degree video, and you can get a sense of that ability to look around and pan and zoom and see different aspects or see a video from different locations. So that if, if you don't have the equipment to try it, but you have a phone, um, you can head on over to YouTube and see some 3D video and get a sense of what that's like. All right, well, we're almost out of time for the first half, but we will definitely be back really soon. Um, this is Johnny Glendenny for the XOS Grand Mercury. Now what you just saw at home was a video of two people on a roller coaster from Pennsylvania and that's basically where we're going with this like we're integrating it into like just normal things that we do every day. So anybody want to like give another example? I don't like roller coasters so. You don't like roller coasters? That's right. I mean I can see this like first of all insane business opportunity. I'm just thinking like I've always wanted to like stand in the batter's box and have somebody throw major league pitching past me. I have an app like that. I can't imagine Did that they wouldn't, really, right? Like, you could really actually exists. put one of those on and maybe they have like a little thing that like is kind of a pseudo bat or whatever. I don't um, So that could actually possibly happen, I suppose. Yeah. So, I, I, I think as a, as a, the implications for education are enormous. If I were a biology teacher and I could take students in into a cell and we could manipulate things within that cell or watch it divide right next to us, that, that would be pretty powerful. I think a pretty powerful teaching tool and that is where it's headed. What do you think? Um, in education right now, uh, I, I agree with art, like to have that ability for any type of like either social studies going back in time, see a battle, you know, or biology, that's great. Um, I don't think in the next 20 or 30 years that the students are going to be here still. I think it's more higher education at that point where you're going to have colleges and students just going to classes with these on and connecting via captive that way compared to um, you know 
K through 12. <laughs> I mean, I, I've, I've asked around, apparently I'm the only person who actually disagrees with that argument. I think that school actually is, I mean, obviously it's gonna change. We're probably gonna use virtual reality in school, guaranteed there's no debating that. But I think that school not only provides more kids with like an opportunity to go out there and like meet other kids and like, if you just have these on all day, like you're not gonna be doing anything other than like literally just sitting there. And I think that our society values more of like a, uh, like a physical thing than it would be just like a standard education. But aren't you looking at that through the prism of where you are right now? I mean, you also have to remember though that like, I mean, parents have to go to work. Like, I mean, granted they might have virtual reality too, but like still what I'm trying to get at is like, say if those jobs still exist where parents have to go out to their jobs and they have to drive there or whatever like kids need the parents need a place where they know they can drop the kid off they'll be safe and they'll learn like who knows the kids might just get here and just put on virtual reality goggles but i feel like the school as a building will still exist and so on and so forth it's possible but certainly the, the teachers will not be in the building probably right or maybe there'll be maybe people who supervise the kids maybe non-human people will be supervising the kids as well. So I mean, I guess that means again, like half the panel is going to be out of a job. Though. In the year 2525, <laughs> if man is still alive, there may, not be any, there may not be any kids. That's a reference for our older set here. For listening audience. <laughs> older people and a listening audience, yeah. But if you look at, um, again, through the VR, I would argue with you. You're, you'll have kids 20 years from now. Hopefully. And you're looking at it from the prism of where you are right now. Down the line, though, you say you need to interact. If I can interact with you and you're in California through this, isn't that social interaction? All right. Well, I mean, we have to remember back in the 1980s, uh, Martin McFly went to the year 2015, and we had the idea of like what things were going to be like. And granted, things advanced dramatically to like what they were then. But I mean, we weren't even at that point. Like, I mean, the Cubs did not win the World Series. Like, well, that you know what I mean. Like, I think we also have to look at interaction through technology that we have today, because we have things like the internet and smartphones. And while they can be great tools and you can interact and communicate with people all over the world, you can also isolate yourself in your own little world. And with um, a virtual reality, to put yourself in a completely different reality, closed off from the outside world, um, is bringing that to another extreme. And I don't think we know how exactly that's going to go. I think the artificial intelligence with that virtual reality will prescribe to you the appropriate amount of social interaction and, and feed that to you when, when it thinks you're ready for it or when it thinks you need it. Well, it'll, it'll, we it'll take, about take the place of your parents and, and the other interaction that you might ordinarily enjoy as Again, a human Again, with here. mixed reality, uh, augmented reality that's coming out where you, you can sit there in a chair, you're not there. Like, I mean, I, if I had virtual reality goggles, I would never leave Hawaii. I'm just saying. Like, that's just, <laughs> wouldn't matter but, where you were. I mean, it, that's like there's the, there is the real possibility that there will be a certain segment of the society that will completely withdraw into a virtual world. You know that their bodily needs will they'll meet their bodily needs at, at home, but the rest of the time, why would you not? Why would you not spend your time in a a world of your choosing, right? Where you can interact with whatever it is that you, you care to interact with, as long as you... you know, your, your version of paradise, go there. Yeah, I mean, like... The is more, this heaven? <laughs> the, more we've been, the more we've been talking about it, the more I've like kind of realized that like, what's gonna happen is like, I can literally just sit there and say, I wanna own the Newport mansions. Like, I can literally just live in one of them, like virtually, and that would be awesome. And on that note, I want you to think about that at home. And this is Johnny Glendening for the XOS Mercury, signing off.